Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Raw, where I share my thoughts, my editing, and my workflow of an image from a recent shoot. And this week, it's the turn of the return, effectively. So um, I went back to a location that I've been to many, many times, and it's always yielded a shot. And this location is Ballycotton and Ballycotton Lighthouse. And it's something that I would encourage you to do quite often. If you have a location that's close to home, go back there on a regular, regular basis, because what you're going to get are different conditions every single time. Now, I've never been let down by Ballycotton. I've always gotten a shot from there. And on this occasion, something quite unusual that probably happens quite regularly, but I had never seen it before, was flat water. Now, I'm at the ocean and the waves in Ballycotton can be quite strong. But what I noticed is that as the tide was going out, there was areas of flat water, which were fantastic because I still had the sun setting behind me, lighting up the lighthouse that was sitting on the horizon. And then I was able to see into these pools effectively, even though they weren't rock pools, they were just sheltered areas that were being protected from the waves by the rocks, but allowed me to be able to have some totally different types of images. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through one of the images from that shoot. I'm going to jump over onto Lightroom and I'll talk you through my entire process. Let's go. Okay, so here's my image right now, and as you can see, it looks quite dark. But that's the beauty in regards to shooting here in RAW, because this settings here was taken at 30 seconds, F13, ISO 100, and I was at 16 mil. Now, what I want to aim to achieve here is that utilizing my polarizer, I was able to see into all of these rocks that are below me. And as I edit this image, all of those are going to be revealed. Now, as I said in my intro, if I give you a look at something here, when we look up at the um, horizon. So there's Ballycotton Lighthouse, which is an iconic lighthouse, and one of only a few actually that are painted black. But you can see this movement here. This is all of the large waves that were breaking outside here. But between where I was and these waves were all of these rocks, which were dissipating the waves. And effectively, what I ended up with in front of me was relatively calm water. Yes, of course, there were movements because it's still the ocean, but it was totally unusual for me to be able to photograph this with these conditions. So what I wanted to do was put on my polarizer to be able to see into these rocks. And as I edit this image as well, you're going to see all of the detail here on the seaweed that was here in the kelp. Um, come to life on the image. And one thing I've noticed actually when I'm looking at this here is that I do have quite a lot of hot spots on my sensor. So these are little red dots that you'll see around here. This is because I was doing quite a lot of long exposures on that day and obviously your sensor is going to get warm. So it's something that just to be conscious of, you can remove them in post, but just be careful in relation to the same. So as always, I'm going to go through on my uh, process. So the first step I want to do is make sure that my horizon is straight. So when I look at this, it isn't straight, so slightly off. So I'm going to utilize uh, up here. If you keep your eye on this horizon, you're going to see a line appear in a grid line. And now I want to make sure that that is straight. So it is now straight. That is perfect. What I would generally do, as I've done in previous episodes of this, is just to give a steer, go ahead and click on auto, and auto is going to bring out the detail for what it thinks is right. That's not far off, actually, I think, where I'm going to end up on. But, you know, I want to take you through um, on how I would edit the image anyway, in general. So, looking at my histogram here, which is going to give me my steer. I'm okay from a highlights point of view, but I am quite dark. And I know I'm quite dark because these are dark, they were in shadow. Behind me where I was shooting actually that is cliffs and then the sun was setting behind that again. So you see that this has been lit up here on the top by the sunlight, but all here is almost in darkness. So with the 30 seconds and with my um, filters on to get the 30 seconds and with my polarizer, of course, it's going to be dark, but I can bring all that detail out, which again is the beauty of shooting in raw. So we're going to first and foremost look and say, okay, do I need to increase my exposure? Now, if I increase my exposure slightly, we start to see some of the detail coming through, but we are lo losing the detail in the sky. So I'm going to keep my exposure as it is right now, and I'm going to 
settle for uh, editing the shadows and the blacks separately. So on the highlights point of view, whack it all the way up here, you see that's gone extremely bright, I lose the detail in the sky. Whereas if I bring it all the way down here, you can see all of the detail now in this clouds and everything else that's appearing here overall. So I won't bring it down totally, but I'm going to bring it down quite a lot. So there's the highlights down in relation to that. Shadows, I can whack those all the way up. I have all of the area to play around with here. And by whacking the shadows all the way up, you see now these rocks that I was telling you about are all now revealing all of the detail. And again, looking at these here, you can see the different colorings that are there, the different shapes that are there, not only on those rocks, but also on the other side as well here. So for now, I'm going to whack my shadows completely up. I will affect that towards the end, but just from the editing process, I want to bring it to where it is right now. And now that I look at this, I kind of want to increase my uh, highlights a bit further as well. Now, on the whites point of view, I've got a lot that I can play with here. And this is when I think the image is going to start to jump. So if I start to take these here, now I can bring my whites up. The image is coming more alive, becoming more vibrant as such. Blacks, again, quite dark, so I can bring those up slightly. And I'm always looking at the histogram to try and bring as much detail into the center of the histogram as I possibly can. Texture I don't use, clarity I don't use. Dehaze, if I bring this up here, you notice that it darkens everything down. You can see into these rocks that are below me, but it's also creating this blue band above the top of the sky. So I don't want to do too much in relation to that. I want to keep this relatively um, normal per se. Now, looking down here as well, I'm going to go down uh, and I'm going to go into to my tone curve and I'm going to play with this slightly because I want to be able to affect this. If you look at the way the histogram is looking here, my tone curve is not really following that. I could say, okay, I'm going to click here and I'm going to click here and I'm going to click here and I'm going to bring that down to match that. But as you can see, what it does to the image is it completely destroys the image. And now that I've done that, I can see that I have a couple of sensor spots as well that are there. So I'm going to ignore that and I'm not going to go near my tone curve for now. Okay. Now then let's go back while I just spotted it here and to go into my dehaze tool, whack that all the way up. And now you see these appearing. So if I, if I zoom in, I can look around for any dust spots or sensor spots. So there's one up the top here and I do seem to see that one quite a lot. So I'm going to uh, have to clean my sensor. So I've got one up here and I've got one here and one here. If I scroll across and look at the other areas that I have, another one which is what I spotted. So there's the other one here. Again, secret here is don't make this too big or too small. You want to make the brush just right with a small bit of room either side so that you don't get a very pronounced uh, sensor removal or dust removal, let's just say. So now we're going to take our dehaze. I'm going to drop that back down and I'm going to zoom back out and I want to look at this overall image. And now I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to increase my dehaze ever so slightly. Now, contrast again is something which I love to use because it really helps you to be able to smooth out an image or make an image more contrasting. So if I look at this here, if I bring it to the left hand side, it becomes more painterly, more dreamlike. Um, and I like that in regards to what it's doing for the image. If I take that and bring it all the way to the right here, it is making all of these effectively sharper, but it's making it too dark. So for me, I'm going to take the contrast and I'm just going to drop it to minus 21. Now, the next thing I want to look at and say, okay, is how do I bring out some color within this image? So if I look at my vibrance here, now what I should be seeing is color on the sky here, color in these rocks, and then some of the color as well below me here. So I'm going to take my vibrance and I'm going to increase it and you'll start to see the color arriving on the image here on the top. Now, overall, what I like in regards to this image is that I can see these rocks. However, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around here with my crop and I'm going to go into 16.9 and I'm going to bring it up so I can get a bit of the sky to see how that looks. Does it look more balanced? Or I can also drop it down and remove part of the sky because that, that effectively up here is not adding much to the image. And that's the beauty of this location because with the lighthouses sitting on your horizon, your horizon doesn't necessarily always have to be, you know, on your top thirds. It can be like you see right now on the very top of the image. But for me, I think it's a bit uh, overall too tight. So I'm not going to change my crop on that. I'm going to go back to as shot. And that gives me a better image and a better overall view of the image. Now, the final thing that I want to do is to be able to say, okay, what is the detail and have I got any noise within the image to remove? So if I go into detail here and actually more before I do that on my sharpening, so hold down option key and then take the masking. Actually, I'll take off 
this here for a moment and I'm going to detail. So hold on the option key and then take your masking and if you look here, it's going to tell you what it's going to sharpen. I don't want it to sharpen anything in the sky. I don't want it to sharpen anything on the water. But what I do want it to do is to give a small bit more sharpening to these rocks. So bringing your masking tool over till you see the only areas that are now white are the things that are going to be sharpened, which effectively is what I want to be sharpened, which is these. It doesn't necessarily need any sharpening anyway. And then we're going to go into the usual denoise. And this is the noise reduction, which is AI. So it's going to look and say, okay, uh, is there noise that I may not see, but this will find it and apply it only to that part of the image. So if I look here in the darker areas, yeah, there was a small tiny bit of noise, but if I look in the sky here, you're going to see that smoothing that all out. And then if I look down below me, which is on the darker here, you see the noise that's there. Now it removes that noise. So I'm definitely going to utilize um, this to be able to make sure that I can um, uh, remove that noise. Now, incidentally, an interesting thing that I said about the sensor hotspots. So if you look at the screen here, I'll click where the mouse is. So there is a sensor spot right above here. When I click on this here, see the green dot, that's a, a hotspot. So if I now enhance that, it also removes those. So that's a very quick way, instead of having to go through the overall image with a brush tool. So I'm going to click on this here, let it do its thing, and I'll check back in once it's done, probably 40 seconds from now. Okay, so that's now done. So what I want to do now is press L on my keyboard, which is my light box, and that removes the clutter, and then I can press L again, it goes completely dark. And looking at that image, I think it is nice. I probably will increase the vibrancy a slight bit more because there was a lot of color here on this as the sun was hitting that. So if I come to my vibrancy or even saturation and just give it a touch here, now we start to see this jumping, which I think is far more pleasing. And I like all the detail then that I have in these rocks and the seaweed and everything else along the entire way. And now just doing a quick scan across the image here. Yeah, I like that. I think that's going to be a finished image for me. So thank you very much as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing behind the raw for this episode, but it's definitely something that I would encourage you to do is to go back to a location that's close by many, many times. You can refine your skills, but definitely you're going to get a different shot because the conditions will always change. And this is a perfect case in point. So thank you very much as always for joining me. I, feel, hope, I hope you can join me again for my next episode next Sunday where I actually share something which is totally different again from the channel. So you might notice that when we're out taking shots you know the clothes that we wear are very important because I could be out for four or five hours and I need to be warm, I need to be dry, I need to be comfortable waiting for that light. And if I don't have the right clothes, then that can be cut short. So for me, this episode coming here is who are the real heroes of landscape photography. And I hope that you can join me for that episode. So please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment. And until the next time, thanks as always. Shalom Gafol.